There was a time, long ago, when humans existed at a very high level of consciousness. We were intradimensional and were very psychic. We communicated through thought and emotion, much like how animals do rather than speaking or writing, which would seem very primitive. These men were six-dimensional beings at that time and were living at a very high level of consciousness, so whatever they thought happened instantly. It was that simple. In humans, the Kundalini is often referred to as the energy serpent that runs up and down your spine. When activated, it provides an immense amount of energy through all of the chakras. The earth itself also has a Kundalini because the earth is alive, like an organism, running from the center of the planet to a specific place on the surface. Wherever the Kundalini resides, the people there become the spiritual leaders of the world. If what Thoth says is true, well, that explains everything. The creation of all of the sacred sites on the planet were no accident. It was a single consciousness that created them all, from Machu Picchu to Stonehenge to Zaghuan, you name it. There are a few exceptions, but most were created by a single awareness as part of a unity consciousness grid. Although the Great Pyramid was done all at once, many of these ancient structures of the world were made fourth dimensionally and slowly dropped in frequency until they manifested on the third dimension over a long period of time. Richard Hoagland's research brings this forward, but he wasn't the first either. They showed how one sacred site is extrapolated from another to another to another. A hot topic of discussion right now are ley lines. These are simply geometric relations between sacred sites. Archaeologists are now finding these huge connections between major spiritual sites in the globe, and now we know why they're connected. These sites had to be built physically so that the Christ consciousness grid could manifest. In a way, think of the physical sites as the wiring of a giant wireless electrical system, and then it needs about 13,000 years of continuous energy flow for it to actually turn on. And just so that you're not left in suspense, yes, the grid was completed. It came to life and is now active, though not really used. Congratulations, Earth. We actually survived. Not only has Thoth told us this in person, but he's also written it down in the Emerald Tablets. These tablets were left in the Great Pyramid thousands of years ago. There are 12 tablets in total, formed from a substance created through alchemical transmutation. They are imperishable, resistant to all elements and corrosion. Their atomic structure is fixed in place, and no change can ever take place. In that respect, they violate the material laws of ionization. These tablets share a great wisdom, and you can read them at over a hundred different levels of consciousness, and you will always understand them differently. If you're interested in this stuff, you should definitely consider reading them. And that is just the beginning. Welcome to The Ancient Secrets of King. Five, four, three, two, one.